When teaching longitudinal data analysis, we typically focus on observed variables. This is for simplicity. However, there is nothing that prevents you from doing longitudinal analysis of latent variables. Let's take a look at what is involved when we do a longitudinal model of latent variables. So let's assume we have this kind of model. We have x1, x2 and x3, which are latent variables measured at different times. And we have three indicators. x11 is the first indicator measured at the first time point. x12 is the same indicator measured at the second time point. And x13 is the same indicator measured at the third time point. Beyond what is required for observed variable longitudinal analysis, there are a normal cross-sectional latent variable analysis. There are two additional considerations that we need to take into account when we do longitudinal modeling of latent variables. The first thing is that we need to understand what these error terms are about. So error terms typically, they capture unreliability, but they also capture item uniqueness. So there might be something in X11 that is or, or the first indicator that is persistent over time that is different from the second indicator. So quite often we want to say that the first indicator's uniqueness correlates over time. So we have these correlations over time of these measurement errors. So that is the first special thing that you need to consider when you do longitudinal analysis of latent values. Another thing is measurement invariance. Measurement invariance briefly means that your measurement model works the same way or the measurement process works the same way between x1 and x2 and x2 and x3. This is important because it is possible that the skeptic to our argument says that there is actually no correlation between x1 and x2, rather this is a measurement effect. Or if we are looking at levels, one would say, could say that uh, x2 has a higher mean than x1, not because there are attribute of interest that has evolved over time, but simply because our measurement process works differently between the first and second time point. We need to consider measurement invariance, which I explain in more detail in another video, to address this concern. Let's take a look at two examples of how, what a longitudinal latent variable model would look like. So this is a, the cross model without random intercepts. We can see that we have positive affect, negative affect. There is the correlation with the error terms in the same time. We have the autoregressive terms here, the paths here, and the cross paths here. And we can see that the errors are relatively correlated so that uh, the first indicator correlates always with the first indicator at different time points. So all the first indicator observations are allowed to be freely correlated. All the second indicator observations are allowed to be freely correlated. And all the third indicator observators observations are allowed to be freely correlated. So this is the correlations over time. The same thing can be seen also in this um, latent change model. So uh, instead of having observed variables here, we have latent variables. And we have means which are typically of interest when we want to model change over time. And we have these uh, correlated error terms that allow the uniqueness to persist over time.